Assalamu alaikum, my dear students. I expect that you are all getting well and you are not wasting your time sitting at home and you are preparing for the upcoming exams properly. This is Roxana Barbin, Senior Lecturer, Department of Biology, Malistan College. Welcome you to the online class today on the chapter Genetics and Heredity. Today's topics are Mendelian Inheritance, the first law of Mendel and the explanation of the first law of Mendel. So before getting started, we need to know some basics about the inheritance of alleles. So you already got to know about the allele, which are the specific genes found in the specific locations of chromosomes, especially on the paired chromosomes. Here, it's written that Mendel assumed that genes or characteristics are inherited as pair of alleles. Alice means the traits that behave in a dominant and recessive pattern. Alleles segregate into gametes such as each gamete is equally likely to receive either one of the two alleles present in a diploid individual. So what is the basically Mendel's first law? It states that during gamete formation, the two alleles at a gene locus segregate from each other. Each gamete has an equal probability of containing either allele. That means during gamete formation, we all know that meiosis occurs. During meiosis, the paired genes from the paired chromosomes get divided from each other and they segregate totally. When they form the individual or when zygote is formed, all those genes again come together forming pairs of the, you know, in specific loci. So do we understand the dominant and recessive traits? Here are some diagrams. Okay, you see the different seed shapes are there here, uh, you know, the round shapes are dominant, whereas the recessive are the wrinkled in case of seed color of pea plants. This the yellow color is dominant over the recessive green color. In case of the flower color, purple is dominant over white. In case of pod shape, the inflated is more dominant than the constricted shape, which is unusual. In case of pod color, yellow is mostly usual, that is dominant, and green is during wrapping form. They are very rare, which are recessive. Let's consider this is the axial and the terminal flower position. The axial flower position is most likely to happen in most cases that's why this is called the dominant character and it the recessive character is the terminus of the stem height we know the tall is always dominant over dwarf okay or short so in this case tall pea plants are always dominant over dwarf that means the genes found against the tall height is dominant over the genes which is responsible for dwarf or short structure of pea plant. What is the Mendel's first law of inheritance? Mendel's laws help explain chromosome-based inheritance of traits. That means, although that time the N explanation or the genes basic concepts were being not discovered at the age of Gregor Johann Mendel, Mendel assumed that you know, specific characteristics would be, of course, by the help of different factors. They, you know, the factors were not named as the genes that time. However, Mendel also, you know, credited with identifying the concept of dominant and recessive traits or characteristics. You know, every character has two sides. Contrasting sides, these are, one is dominant, another is recessive. In case of the most of the phenotypic ratios or genotypic ratios, it's proved that dominant characters always win over recessive. Mendel's uh, monohybrid cross 
the can be explained in a very simple way as you already got to know from your previous classes from class 10 of course so you see there are two plants parental plants capital T capital T are the genotype of the tall P plants and small t small t are denoting the you know short P plant okay these are the parental generations during gamete formation you see that the you know pair genes getting divided into you know two or you know then four totally from one diploid reproductive mother cells total four haploid daughter cells are produced among them just one is shown over there that means during gamete formation the pair genes getting divided into half that is capital T and the same happened over there into small t when they form the gamete by fertilization then capital T that means dominant gene and small t that means recessive gene get together and that's you know the gene is obviously focusing on the phenotype that is tall because tall means over short the although there are two types of genes together tall genes always win over small genes or short genes okay so all the phenotypic ratio that means all the pea plants in the first filial generation would appear as tall pea plants okay so when the heterozygous generation that means the tall capital t small t with the capital t small t p plants are allowed to self fertilize or cross in f2 generation it appears to have you know three tall generations and one short generation okay this that means the genotypic ratio would be different from the phenotypic ratio however the phenotypic ratio means the phenotypic generation which are expressed the expression of the phenotypic condition that is three tall generation of pea plants and one dwarf or short generation that is only one in number so the ratio is 3 to 1 as you already know okay so in case of genotype you can see three types of different conditions one is the homozygous tall that is capital T capital T another two individuals we just got they are about capital T as small t and finally the head you know homozygous short genes that is small t small t okay that's how you can easily explain the overall you know monohybrid cross in case of pea plant there might have different explanations at your exam hall or they might ask you some definitions or the explanation regarding the Mendel's first law by the animal or you know the generation of the animals okay so we better know and we uh, better need to know the both cases for plants and animals okay let's go to the board now uh, to go the, uh, go for the details about the you know Mendel's first law uh, and what happens for the different you know animals let's come to the explanation of Mendel's first law let's consider two guinea pigs as the parents to prove the law However, we know that pure black coat color of guinea pig is dominant over the white coat color of guinea pig. According to the genetical laws or principles, we know different characteristics as dominant and recessive. There is a list at your book. You can see here, I'm going to say that black color is always dominant over white color. So, pure black guinea pig contains the genotype capital B capital B which is a homozygous character pure white guinea pig contains the genotype small b small b which is also homozygous let's cross between the parents pure black guinea pig means this one and the symbol is for male gamete and pure white guinea pig means this one here as female parent or female gamete. When gamete formation occurs, you see meiosis is necessary and as a result, 
haploid number of chromosomes and haploid chrom number of chromosomes occur over there. Okay? When fertilization occurs in F1 or first filial generation, capital B, small b, that means heterozygous black coated guinea pigs are found. That means all the individuals in the first filial generation are black. Why black? Because this is the combination between dominant and recessive gene. You know, dominant gene always dominates over the recessive gene. Here, capital B is the dominant gene and small b is the recessive gene. So, who wins? Of course, capital B wins over small b. That means, black wins over the white coated color. Right? This is the result of the F1 generation. Well, now, let's consider F1 cross F1. That means, let's the F1 generation to reproduce with each other. Here the parents, black guinea pig, with the black guinea pig, you need to uh, know that this black guinea pig is not that, you know, pure black guinea pig. That is the heterozygous guinea pig. That means due to presence of this black gene, white gene is suppressed. That means the genotype is this for this black as well as this black too. This is the mixture of homozygous or heterozygous characters. Surely, these are the mixture of different genes, contrasting genes. Okay, so these are homo heterozygous, not homozygous. So here are the gametes. During gamete formation, you see they got, you know, halved. That means during gamete formation, it uh, is getting separated or alleles are getting segregated or separated. During F2 generation, we see the scenario. At first, what you need to do that, just draw a checkerboard like this, okay? And you put the gametes over there, okay? For this is for female gamete. Female gamete is here, capital B, small b, capital B and small b. In case of male gamete, means these gametes are put over there, right? And let's cross between them. Capital B, capital B, black, homozygous, black. I repeat, homozygous black. Then, when capital B with small b, this one is also black, but this one is heterozygous black, not homozygous. Same thing occurs over there, and when the cross occurs between the small b, small b, that means both are recessive genes, the final result comes out with white colored coated guinea pigs. Okay, as a result, the genotypic ratio comes out as 1 is to 2 is to 1. I read 1 is to 2 is to 1. What is this 1 about? This 1 about this homozygous black. What about this 2? These 2 are these 2 heterozygous black. Means this trimer, these 2 are heterozygous. And 1 white, that is about this one right this homozygous recessive character or small b small b right but overall when we see any individual we cannot see the genotype can you see your own genetic background it's not possible the next generation or the next generation might have to be experimented or needed to prove that what kind of gene you had or what kind of genetic disease maybe you have. Right, so phenotypic ratio is very simple, you see. These three are black. Let's get star mark with this one, two, and three for phenotypic ratio. These are threes to one. Three means all this black, this, this, and this, and one means this only white. Okay, so as a result, we can say that during explanation, we must know that the genotypic ratio is 
1 is 2, 2 is 2, 1 means these are on the basis of the genetic consequences and phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1. Phenotypic means what are expressed. Expression of the characteristics. Suppose I have a hidden gene inside me which contains or which carries diseases but it's not actually expressing on my health or behavior but in the next generation this gene might be violent or dominant. So genetical constitutions cannot be uh, you know, easily found out after seeing the organism. But phenotypic typing means the expression of any gene. Okay? I hope that you understood the overall topic and you can explain the Mendel's first law by following this formula. You may apply the P plants, tall or short genes, like capital T, small t type, I am mentioning over there the capital T, capital T, small t, small t, right? You know, these uh, are the homozygous tall and these are the heterozygous tall. Okay, you already had your in your previous exams or SSC level. Okay, so we may practice both. This one is for animal and this one is for pea plants. We are about to finish the online class today on this topic and I hope that you got to know many things and you will practice at home and you will get to know uh, about details on Mendelian laws of inheritance provided by Mendel and you will practice at home. Your homework is to learn the explanation of Mendel's first law and obviously and hopefully I will see you in the next class. Bye-bye.